I've been meaning to make this video on how to make the softest, yummiest chapatis ever for a long time. I never knew actually how to make chapatis until COVID struck 2020. So I practiced and practiced and learned how to make soft and yummy chapatis. I learned what I was doing wrong, the mistakes I was making and everything. And today is your lucky day. These are my ingredients for making chapatis. Here I have wheat flour. All right, I'll tell you a bit more about the wheat flour later. I have warm water, I have salt, I have sugar, and I have oil, okay? Sometimes I just use plain oil, sometimes I will use coconut oil to mix it. This coconut oil is fantastic because it's 100% pure. It's also the same one. If you watch my video on how to make an amazing body butter using Roshia butter, and everything i will link it here it's also the same one we use to apply on our skin it's 100 percent natural it's been really good for our our kids and even us for our skin our hair and everything so this is what i'm going to use it's good for eating it's good for hair skin nails everything 100 percent coconut oil so we use that sometimes it's what i'll use today to to mix to mix everything but uh vegetable oil will also do if you watch my video on extreme kitchen makeover i said how i love to decant my vegetable oil into these this is a ketchup bottle because it has a very small opening so i'm able to i'm able to control how much oil i'm using so boom that's it now one of the reasons why uh, our chapatis can get hard is when we don't measure our wheat flour all right I used to just pour, pour, pour as much as my eyes would want. But the one pro tip is make sure you measure. I have a measuring cup inside here. I don't know whether you can see it. Uh, and it, it just really helps to measure, okay? Another thing is um, normally we use flour that we have milled. My mom buys wheat and then she mills for us. And then she, she just she brings it to us. But now because of the lockdown, I've had to make my own wheat flour. So what I do is I take uh, the brown wheat flour, which I find to be a bit hard to make chapos with on its own. So I mix brown wheat flour and white wheat flour. And so what I have today is a mixture. All right. So if you watch my video on the 30 things we no longer buy, don't wonder how come this is not looking like flour that has been milled at the millers because we, d we haven't had a chance to get that flour because of the lockdown yeah so he that's another tip which is tip number one is make sure you measure your wheat flour so now i'm going to make six cups i'm going to use six cups of of wheat flour which i'll just put in this here my trusty bowl one two three four five six so into these six cups of wheat flour i am going to add four tablespoons of sugar sweetness or saltiness is up to you three it's up to you to decide how sweet you want it to be or how salty so that one is according to preference then just about half a teaspoon of salt just like that okay so tip number two on why sometimes our chapatis are hard is that we don't mix it with oil we don't put oil in the mixing process once i found this out i was really amazed so this is the point at which i put my coconut oil when i don't have coconut oil i will put the vegetable oil okay or you can melt butter if you're feeling fancy schmancy you can melt butter and put some of it in or ghee just some top some type of oil will also help your chapatis to be soft all right so here i eyeball it but i would normally say about four tablespoons all right chapatis uh i found they take up a lot of oil i guess that's why they say we should just have a maximum of two for the sake of our waistlines yes so basically that's all i'm going to mix in 
now here's tip number three on why your chapatis may be getting hard is if you're using cold water to mix this is warm water warm water really helps to activate the gluten which is in the flour all right so use warm water not hot water warm water all right and also don't pour your don't first put water in the bowl and then add flour actually mix your dry ingredients first and then you put the water that's also another tip okay so my hands are clean y'all which is of course very important the reason why i don't prefer to measure my water first is because i am unable to control the softness of the dough all right another reason why your chapatis might be hard a pro tip is if you make your dough too hard your dough should be soft your dough should be soft straight from the point that you are making it so now i'm going to dig a well in there then i'm going to put just a little bit of water okay one liter i think is basically too much normally i use about half a liter for six cups but the best thing is just put little by little and then see how how it reacts okay all right so now let me put some i'll just put just like that okay then i'll mix that up and see how we are doing you want your dough to be soft but not wet so another tip of why sometimes our chapatis might not be hard enough i mean hard enough surely might not be soft enough is because we don't need the dough enough kneading is very important when we're making chapatis what happens when we need chapatis is that we activate the gluten that is in the flour all right there's a protein in flour that's called gluten i'm sure you guys have heard about it so the more we need it the more we activate it and the more the gluten is activated the softer the dough becomes okay so we're supposed to actually need it for between 15 to 20 minutes so don't get tired of kneading now i can tell i have put too much water because it's getting a bit sticky so before i learned how to make chapos i would see that i've put too much water then i would put too much flour then it would get too hard then i would add more water so i just really have to be very precise so i'll just sprinkle a bit and knead on you want your dough to reach the point where it stops sticking to the bowl can you see that can you see that that's the point that we want it to get to stop sticking to the bowl and stop sticking to your hands can you see how clean my bowl is getting look at that whoopsies now i feel like it's still sticking just a little bit to my finger very little but i want to leave it like that because i am going to let it rest all right here's another pro tip let your dough rest for at least 30 minutes normally when i have time i would make my dough in the morning when i'm doing my morning routine we love using the fly lady system and so there's a morning routine to that i've made a video of my morning routine so i would make my dough at about 10 o'clock and then i would start making the chapos at about 3 p.m so it will have rested a good five hours that makes it even softer but if i don't have the luxury of time like now i will let it rest for about 30 minutes okay so that's another tip 
Oh, look at that. It's not even sticking anymore. Now that's a nice dough. Okay. So another thing is just spread a little bit of oil on top just to cozy everything up. Oops, on the inside. Just a little bit like that and spread it on top of your dough like that beautiful okay then you can use a wet damp cotton cloth to cover or you can use a polythene bag okay so it's ready so i get this polythene bag i just put it on top and then to make sure it's nice and airtight i take this side plate I just place it on top, all right? Just like that. Set my timer for 30 minutes to an hour. And then I will be, I will be right back. My dough has now rested for about 45 minutes. I got a bit carried away taking care of kids. And now we are ready to knead it again for just about five minutes. And then I'll show you what we'll do next. So the dough has been resting for 45 minutes. So I'm going to dust, rather to flour my clean counter. Now here is where I also used to go wrong because I used to put, use too much flour when I'm rolling and that would make the chapatis to be hard. So there's another tip. When you're rolling it, don't put too much flour on the, on the, on the surface that you're using so that you don't end up making an, a soft dough to be hard by adding so much flour. I hope that makes sense. All right, you can see it's already soft. Really soft actually which is great. So I'll put it there. So also giving it time to rest enables the gluten to have a bit more time to activate. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to knead it for just a further five minutes to make it super duper soft. You can see my dough is very soft. So the next step is to roll it out because we also want to make our chapatis to be layered. You know those chapatis that you tear like this and they have those layers? Well, that's exactly what we want, okay? So I'm being very careful to not over flour my dough. So you're going to spread out the whole dough. I'm happy with that. And then you're going to oil it, all right? As I said, normally I would use a vegetable oil, but when I'm feeling, you know, fancy, I'm going to use my trusty coconut oil. Because anyway, after all, this will be yummy coconut chapatis. I mean, when was the last time you had some coconut chapatis in your house. So again, be generous with the oil. Remember we say chapatis are not known for their health benefits. So they do take up quite a bit of oil, but that's, you know, that's where the taste comes from. So spread out the oil with your spoon. Okay. So my coconut oil is on. Everything is smelling so coconutty, you guys. I wish you could smell it. Then I'm going to cut it into strips, all right? Depending on the size of chapatis I want. Now, when you get to the middle, make your strips just a little bit thinner because the middle is usually longer this way, all right? Because you want to do your chapatis <laughs> I almost said chapatis. You want your chapatis to be, you know, 
a uniform size. I mean, it's not cast in stone. I mean, as long as they taste well, people will not care whether whoever's chapati looks bigger than mine. When you get to the edge, hmm, make a little bit wider. Okay, one of them will be really tiny. See, see what I meant? Anyway, that's fine. Then what you do is you take this edge. Okay, clearly I should have dusted this a bit more. But basically, I got this. What you want to do is you want to roll it like this, okay? And then come up like this. And then we're rolling it, all right? This is how we are going to have soft layered chapatis. So then dust, this is what I normally do anyway. I'll dust and then I'll just arrange them like that, all right? It's a bit sticky, but it's okay. It's a price I'm willing to pay because I'd rather they be sticky because they are soft than not be soft enough see that all right so let me finish this then i'll show you exactly how it looks so i'm done rolling them out normally about six cups of flour makes us 15 chapatis which i can see i've managed some of them became a bit bigger than the others but nah, it happens so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover with my polythene bag as I get ready to, to cook them. All right. Let me show you the other tip. So the other tip is this. When it comes to cooking, you have the option of using this light nonstick pan or this heavy one. Okay. The one that makes the best chapatis is the heavy one because it's really good. It regulates the, the distribution of heat and it's not too heavy. This one doesn't work so well, but if it's the only one you have, you can still work with it. But this one is the best for making chapatis. All right. So that's another tip for making soft chapatis. Another tip is you want to make sure your pan is very well heated before you start making. So don't put your first chapati on a lukewarm pan or on a cold pan. By the time that pan gets hot enough, that chapati will have gotten really, really hard. Okay. So let me make, just switch on the fire. And another tip is don't use a flame that is too high or too low. You want a medium flame. One that is too high or too low will make your chapatis hard. So I'll show you the type of flame I'm talking about in a minute. As I wait for my pan to heat up, let me show you where I like to put my chapatis once they're ready. Okay, I just line this, this pot with some serviettes, just to absorb any excess moisture. And then I get one that has a cover. Some people like to put a polythene bag. I'm not very comfortable putting very hot things in polythene bags because I feel like the plastic leaches into my chapatis, although I think that's just in my mind. But basically, that's where I'm going to put my cooked chapatis, all right? So now I feel like my pan is warm enough. I can start rolling out the first one. Another tip is when you're rolling out, as you see, first of all, don't, don't use too much flour. And then also, don't make sure you roll it out evenly. Don't make some parts too thin and others too thick because that's another thing that might, can make it hard in some areas and then, and then soft in others, okay? So you want to make sure. What I try to do is once I've flattened out the middle, I just concentrate on the edges, all right? I do try to make it as round as I can, but then I remind myself people are not eating the shape, they are eating the chapati, okay? And they're not too thin either. I'm happy with that one. 
so then I'll try and dust off the extra and then I put it there okay I'm happy with my pan it's pretty hot just increase the heat a bit because I had reduced it okay now when do you know when to turn your chapati you'll know when to turn your chapati when it starts forming bubbles as you will see very soon because the pan was already warm enough and normally what would happen is you'll notice the bottom side gets cooked slightly longer than the top side so don't worry you're not doing anything bad if you find that the bot the the top part will cook for a lesser time it's just the way it goes all right yeah so normally as i'm waiting for this to bubble up of course i'll be working on my next one so that it's ready for going on the pan As you can see, the bubbles are forming very well. So good size as well. I'll just let them increase just a little bit longer. You can see it's puffing up very well and very fast. That's because my pan was hot. Let me get closer. I'm happy with that. So now I will, I will, no, first I will flip it, sorry. So I'll flip it. And let the bottom side cook. As I said, the, bot the top side, which is now on the bottom, takes a shorter time to cook. Normally it just takes as many minutes as is required for me to apply my cooking oil. As you can see, it's also forming bubbles on the other side because there's some, it's puffing up a bit, okay? And I feel I'm ready to flip it, so I'll flip it. Another way, if you want your chapati to have those nice long lines, is when you flip it, just, you know, turn it around like that, just for a few seconds, all right? Then, put a bit of oil, now here I'm not using my coconut oil because <laughs> my budget would not allow, although if your budget allows it to be a really nice time to use a coconut oil there. Then I check on the browning. Oh, I'm happy with that. So I'll flip it, all right? Twisting it around. So the twisting around is what gets you these nicely browned edges. All right it may feel a bit hard don't be scared listen but that's only because it's on the fire when you put it in your pan and cover it it gets very very soft so don't be scared and think that you've cooked hard chapatis no this is just because it's on the fire and it's ready and i'll put it in my pot and get on with the next one and then after my second chapati i clean off my pan okay see what i mean this might make your chapatis dirty so i'm on my last one it's taken me about 45 minutes give or take and i'm really happy with the way they've come out so now let's have a look at our finished product all right um you can see our lovely chapatis i want to flip them so we can get some that have already cooled down a bit so you can just see how soft they are all right look at this you guys look at this this is this is a miracle the fact that i make chapatis this soft in itself is a miracle i used to make frisbees you guys frisbees but because of the mercies of the lord <laughs> and the embarrassing moments i had well he had mercy on me and voila there we go there we go i love this it's, they're looking really nice 
Can you see how soft they are? I mean, can you see that? Okay. Let me show you just when you tear one how it looks. Probably should have done that before I arranged. Can you see? Can you see the layers? You guys, those guys who like layered chapatis. I hope you can see this. Can you see that? All right. This is in itself is a miracle. I couldn't do this, you guys, before COVID. I couldn't. But now I'm making and it's it's just technique and a lot of practice, but also don't give up on yourself. So now ha, let me taste this is oh first of all the smell of coconut in this place. You guys could not even believe it if you smelt it. Let me taste this. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. This is a very soft chapati. Can you see this? And it tastes amazing. Now, if you want to make your life easy by batching the chapatis, you know how much we love batch cooking around here because we normally batch cook our meals for a whole month. If you want to do that for the chapatis, it's pretty easy. So just follow the same process, cook. But when it comes to freezing, put them in a Ziploc bag while they are still warm. Don't let them to get very cold. So put them in a Ziploc bag and then while well, they're still slightly warm and put them in your freezer, okay? They can last for up to two weeks, even longer, depending on how long you want to freeze them for. And then on the day you want to eat them, remove them from the freezer only 30 minutes before you want to eat them. Don't remove them like in the morning if they're for dinner, remove them like 30 minutes before let them thaw for those 30 minutes and warm them on a pan you know like the heavy pan that we were using to cook them warm them warm them on a pan one by one and eat them immediately bye let me see you in the next one